to the 2023 New Jersey DMV Motorcycle Written Test. This test has 60 questions with explained answers to help you prepare for this test. Before we get started, don't forget to rev that like button to keep this channel running. Now here is your motorcycle instructor to walk you through the questions. Question one. On a sport bike, approximately blank percent of total stopping power is provided by the rear brake. A, 10%. B, 30%. C, 50%. D, 80%. The correct answer is A, 10%. On sport bike types of motorcycles, only about 10% of total stopping power is provided by the rear brake. Question 2. The tachometer on a motorcycle shows A, road speed in miles per hour, B, gear position, C, engine speed in rotations per minute, D, miles driven. The correct answer is C. Engine speed in rotations per minute. A tachometer shows engine speed in rotations per minute. A speedometer shows road speed. And an odometer shows miles driven. Question 3. The average time for adults to process one alcoholic drink is A. 30 minutes. B. 1 hour. C. 2 hours. D. 4 hours. The correct answer is... B. One hour. It varies from male to female and by size of the person. There are, of course, other factors, but one drink per hour is average. Question 4. Proper posture includes having the right wrist A. Higher than the knuckles B. Flat or even with the knuckles C. Lower than the knuckles D. At whatever position is comfortable. The correct answer is... B. Flat or even with the knuckles. The rider needs to be able to reach and squeeze the front brake with the fingertips with ease. A higher than the knuckles position does not allow easy access to the front brake lever and may cause the rider to accidentally apply too much throttle. A lower than the knuckles position allows no access to the front brake. Question 5. The front brake supplies about blank percent of total stopping power on a cruiser type motorcycle. A, 30%, B, 50%, C, 70%, D, 100%. The correct answer is C, 70%. On cruiser-type motorcycles, about 70% of total stopping power is provided by the front brake. On other types of motorcycles, this percentage is different. Question 6. When riding within a group, the inexperienced rider is usually... A. At the tail end of the group. B. In front of the group. C. In the middle of the group. D. Behind the leader of the group. The correct answer is... D. Behind the leader of the group. Generally, the inexperienced rider in a group is placed behind the leader. The leader will pace the entire group based on the skill level of the inexperienced rider. Question 7. If you are riding your motorcycle and encounter a threatening dog, you should... A. Kick at the dog. B. Try to swerve around the dog. C. Slow down when approaching the dog and then speed up. D. Run over the dog. The correct answer is... C. Slow down when approaching the dog and then speed up. When approaching the oncoming dog, at first slow down and then speed up to disrupt its timing. Question 8. The most effective way to stop quickly is to... A. Use both brakes simultaneously in a straight line. B. Use only the front brake. C. Use only the rear brake. D. Engine brake. The correct answer is... A. Use both brakes simultaneously in a straight line. Use both brakes simultaneously in a straight line. Both brakes equals 100% braking power and therefore the shortest stop. Question 9. Bright reflective colors should be worn... A. Only at night. B. During the day. C. All the time when riding. D. Never. The correct answer is... C. All the time when riding. Bright reflective clothing helps the rider be seen by others. Question 10. It is a good idea to flash your brake light when... A. Someone is following too closely. B. Never. C. When you need to slow suddenly. D. When turning. The correct answer is... C. When you need to slow suddenly. 
The correct answer is C, when you need to slow suddenly. Because letting off the throttle can slow the motorcycle, drivers behind you may not realize you are slowing. It is a good idea to flash your brake light to let them know you are slowing. Question 11. A good entry speed for a curve is... A. A speed that allows you to roll on the throttle or maintain throttle at the beginning of the curve. B. A speed that allows you to break through the curve. C. The fastest speed you can take the curve. D. The slowest speed you can take the curve. The correct answer is... A. A speed that allows you to roll on the throttle or maintain throttle at the beginning of the curve. Applying or maintaining throttle at the beginning of the curb stabilizes the suspension and slightly increases ground clearance. Question 12. The best place to find the correct pressure for your tires is A. The sidewall of the tire. B. The motorcycle's owner's manual. C. The tire manufacturer's website. D. The motorcycle dealer. The correct answer is B. The motorcycle's owner's manual. The sidewall pressure is usually the maximum pressure and not the recommended pressure for the tire for your motorcycle. The most accurate information can be found in your motorcycle owner's manual. Question 13. When riding your motorcycle, where is the most likely place for colliding with another vehicle? A. Curve. B. Steep hill. C. An intersection. D. None of the above. The correct answer is C. An intersection. Most crashes involving motorcycles and other vehicles occur at intersections. Question 14. Where do most single vehicle motorcycle crashes occur? A. Curve. B. Steep hill. C. An intersection. D. None of the above. The correct answer is A. Curve. Most single motorcycle crashes occur in curves, usually due to rider error. Riders tend to not slow down enough before entering curves and then overshoot the curve. Go wide. Question 15. Stopping quickly in a curve requires the rider to A. Applying both brakes hard and fast while leaned. B. Leaning the opposite direction while braking. C. Progressively applying both brakes until the bike is upright. D. Only using the rear brake. The correct answer is C. Progressively applying both brakes until the bike is upright. There are two ways to stop quickly in a curve. One, straighten and then brake in a straight line. Two, progressively applying both brakes until the bike is upright, handlebar square, and bike is stopped. Question 16. How many escape paths should a rider keep open in a collision trap? A. 1. B. 2. C. 3. D. More than 1. The correct answer is D. More than one. The more the better, but at least more than one. Escape paths are ways or paths to avoid being trapped in a collision situation. Question 17. When riding in a crosswind, the rider may have to A. Use more hand grip pressure into the wind. B. Use the rear brake. C. Go faster. D. Not carry a passenger. The correct answer is a. Use more hand grip pressure into the wind. When riding in a crosswind, the rider may have to steer more into the wind. This is leaning into the wind. Question 18. Why does a motorcycle have an engine cutoff switch? A. As an emergency backup to the key. B. To offer another option for turning off the engine. C. So the rider does not have to take hands off of the hand grips to turn the engine off. D. To make sure the engine is really off after turning off the key. The correct answer is... C. So the rider does not have to take hands off of the hand grips to turn the engine off. The engine cutoff switch is a safety feature so that the rider does not take his or her hands off of the hand grips to turn off the engine. Question 19. What does the clutch lever do? A. Shift gears. B. Pop a wheelie. C. Stop the motorcycle. D. Remove power from the rear wheel. The correct answer is... D. Remove power from the rear wheel. The clutch lever removes power from the rear wheel. By the same token, the clutch also applies power to the rear wheel. Question 20. Which gear should the rider be in when coming to a stop? A. First. B. Second. 
C. Neutral. D. Any. The correct answer is A. First. The rider should be in first gear when coming to a stop, so he or she can easily start out again or get out of the way of a vehicle approaching too fast from the rear. Question 21. Why does a motorcycle rider change gears? A. To stop. B. To start out from a stop. C. To match engine speed to road speed. D. To go around a curve. The correct answer is C. To match engine speed to road speed. The rider changes gears to match engine speed to road speed, higher gears for higher speeds, lower gears for lower speeds. Question 22. What is engine braking? A. Braking while the engine is on. B. Using only the rear brake. C. Using only the front brake. D. Using the engine to slow you down by downshifting and easing out the clutch. The correct answer is D. Using the engine to slow you down by downshifting and easing out the clutch. Engine braking involves the rider to downshift while easing out the clutch to use the engine to reduce speed. Rider should consider flashing his or her brakes so vehicles behind him or her can see the motorcycle slowing. Question 23. Which type of helmet provides the most protection in case of a crash? A. Half-shell helmet. B. Three-quarter helmet. C. Modular or flip-up helmet. D. Full-face helmet. The correct answer is... D. Full-face helmet. A full-face helmet provides the most protection, including face and chin protection. A half-shell or beanie helmet provides the least amount of coverage. Question 24. Define hypothermia. A. Above normal body temperature. B. Normal body temperature. C. Below normal body temperature. D. Average motorcycle temperature. The correct answer is... C. Below normal body temperature. Hypothermia, or below normal body temperature, can easily affect motorcycle riders, especially if proper protective gear is not worn. Question 25. Which part of the lane is best lane position for being seen at an intersection? A. The middle part of the lane. B. There is no single best lane position. C. The left part of the lane. D. The right part of the lane. The correct answer is... B. There is no single best lane position. The best lane position at an intersection depends on the situation and how well the rider is seen by others and sees others. Question 26. When should you check your motorcycle's tire pressure? A. Every time before you ride. B. Once a week. C. Once a month. D. When it looks low. The correct answer is A. Every time before you ride. The tire pressure and tread should be checked before every ride. Tire pressure should be checked with a precise tire pressure gauge. Tread depth should be checked with a tread depth tool. Available at any motorcycle parts seller or on Amazon. Question 27. If you accidentally lock the front wheel when applying the front brakes, you should A. Keep it locked. B. Release and then reapply with less pressure. C. Apply more rear brake. D. Accelerate. The correct answer is B. Release and then reapply with less pressure. The rider should immediately release the front brake and reapply with less pressure. Otherwise, a loss of control will occur and the rider could low side. Question 28. Which of the following can affect motorcycle traction? A. Acceleration. B. Deceleration. C. Tire pressure. D. All of the above. The correct answer is... D. All of the above. Too much acceleration, deceleration, or improper tire pressure can all affect motorcycle traction. Question 29. Motorcycle helmets should be A. OSHA compliant B. FDA compliant C. DOT compliant D. NFPA compliant The correct answer is C. DOT compliant At a minimum, motorcycle helmets should be DOT compliant. Other organizations such as ECE and Snell also test and approve helmets. Question 30. Counterweighting is used 
A in low speed tight turns, B in high speed turns, C in every turn, D when braking. The correct answer is A in low speed tight turns. In low speed tight turns, the handlebar is turned in the direction of the turn and the rider should lean his or her body to the outside of the turn to counterbalance the motorcycle. Question 31. The main cause of motorcycle accidents is A. Improper braking B. Improper cornering C. Other drivers D. An interaction of factors The correct answer is D. An interaction of factors All of these are possible causes of motorcycle accidents, but most crashes involve more than one factor. Riders can control many factors involving skill, their motorcycle maintenance, etc. Question 32. Target fixation means A. Not focusing on the road B. Being distracted C. Looking at one thing too long D. Aiming for something The correct answer is C. Looking at one thing too long Target fixation is looking at one thing for an extended period of time and generally going toward it. For example, an approaching car in the opposing lane. Question 33. Threshold braking means A. Barely using the brakes. B. Only using the front brake. C. Only using the rear brake. D. Using both brakes progressively without locking either wheel. The correct answer is... D. Using both brakes progressively without locking either wheel. Threshold braking is using both brakes in a quick stop to the point just before a skid. It is considered maximum effective braking. Question 34. The three parts of total stopping distance are A. Perception, reaction, and braking. B. Reaction, acuity, and braking. C. Braking, reaction, and traction. D. Traction, reaction, and braking. The correct answer is A. Perception, reaction, and braking. Perception is the time it takes to see a problem. Reaction is reacting to it, reaching for the brakes, and braking is how long it takes for the motorcycle to reach a stop. Question 35. Counter steering in a normal speed turns means A. Pushing the handlebar forward slightly in the direction you want to go. B. Pushing the handlebar forward slightly in the opposite direction you want to go. C. Pulling the handlebar toward you in the direction you want to go. D. Pulling the handlebar toward you in the opposite direction you want to go. The correct answer is... A. Pushing the handlebar forward slightly in the direction you want to go. Counter steering is pushing the handlebar slightly in the direction you want to go. If you want to go left... Pushing forward on the left hand grip causes the motorcycle's front tire to steer slightly right, which initiates a lean to the left. Look left, push left. Lean left, go left. Question 36. Why is it important to do a head check when changing lanes? A. It shows other drivers your intentions. B. Someone might be in your blind spot. C. It helps the motorcycle lean. D. It slows you down. The correct answer is... B. Someone might be in your blind spot. Always do a quick head check to see what might be in your blind spot. Glancing out of the corner of your eye is not enough. It is a chin-to-shoulder movement. Question 37. What is hazardous about starting off up a hill? A. Not seeing the other side. B. Rolling backward. C. Stalling the motorcycle. D. Spinning the tire. The correct answer is... B. Rolling backward. To prevent rolling backward, the rider must either hold the rear brake or front brake or remain in the friction zone with the clutch. Question 38. The friction zone on a motorcycle is A. Where the motor starts putting power to the rear wheel through the clutch. B. When the rear wheel spins. C. Sliding on its side. D. Popping a wheelie. The correct answer is A. Where the motor starts putting power to the rear wheel through the clutch. Releasing the clutch slowly to just at the point where the motor starts applying power to the rear wheel, usually about halfway through the clutch release. Question 39. Why should you park your motorcycle in first gear? A. To keep it from being stolen. 
B. To keep it from rolling. C. So it is easier to start. D. All of the above. The correct answer is... B. To keep it from rolling. The main reason for parking in first gear is to keep the motorcycle from rolling in case there is a slight incline or decline. Question 40. Neutral is... A. All the way down. B. Between first and second gear. C. All the way up. D. Between second and third gear. The correct answer is... B. Between first and second gear. Neutral is half a click up between first and second gear. Neutral is easier to find when the motorcycle is not running. Part of starting the motorcycle includes ensuring the motorcycle is in neutral. Question 41. What is hydroplaning? A. Going too fast for conditions. B. Going too slow for conditions. C. Skidding on the road due to water. D. Water buildup under tread causing loss of traction. The correct answer is... D. Water buildup under tread causing loss of traction. Going too fast when water is on the road allows water to build up under the tread, which causes a loss of traction and could lead to a crash. Question 42. How does carrying a passenger affect the motorcycle? A. Slower takeoffs. B. Longer stops. C. More time for passing. D. All of the above. The correct answer is... D. All of the above. Carrying a passenger increases the total weight of the motorcycle. This makes starting off and stopping slower and requires more time for getting up to speed and passing other vehicles. Question 43. What is the rider's torso position during a swerve? A. Upright, independent of motorcycle lean. B. Leaning in direction of swerve. C. Leaning away from the swerve. D. None of the above. The correct answer is... A. Upright independent of motorcycle lean. Upright independent of motorcycle lean is the correct answer. A swerve is two consecutive counter steers. The bike moves underneath the rider. Question 44. Swerving around an obstacle generally occurs at speeds above A. 10 miles per hour. B. 20 miles per hour. C. 30 miles per hour. D. 45 miles per hour. The correct answer is B. 20 miles per hour. At speeds below 20 miles per hour, a rider can generally stop instead of swerve. Sometimes the rider must brake then swerve. Just never do both at the same time. Question 45. Which of the following actions should be avoided while swerving? A. Braking. B. Accelerating. C. Body leaning. D. All of the above. The correct answer is... D. All of the above. While swerving, the rider should maintain a steady speed and the motorcycle should lean beneath the rider. Question 46. Why should you rise up slightly off of the seat when crossing over an obstacle? A. To keep the obstacle from moving. B. To see better. C. To use the legs and knees as shock absorbers. D. To maintain momentum. The correct answer is... C. To use the legs and knees as shock absorbers. By rising up off of the seat slightly, the legs and knees absorb some of the shock while crossing the obstacle. Stay in this position until the rear wheel clears the obstacle. Question 47. What can a beginner rider do to help with stability when taking off from a stop? A. Take a few power walking steps while building up speed. B. Keep head and eyes up and looking ahead. C. Easing the clutch out, not popping it. D. All of the above. The correct answer is... D. All of the above. All of the above steps help with stability while learning to ride. Question 48. The middle part of the curve is called the... A. Entry. B. Apex. C. Exit. D. End. The correct answer is... A. Entry. The beginning of the curve is called the entry, and the end of the curve is called the exit. The apex is generally the sharpest part of the curve. Question 49. What do you do about a tailgating driver? A. Throw objects at him. B. Brake check him. C. Increase distance between from vehicles ahead. D. Speed up. The correct answer is... C. 
increased distance between from vehicles ahead. The rider should avoid getting too close to the car in front and potentially become sandwiched between two vehicles. Therefore, the best answer is to slow down and increase distance to the vehicle in front. Question 50. Why is riding a motorcycle more dangerous than driving a car? A. Less visibility. B. Less protection. C. Less stability. D. All of the above. The correct answer is D. All of the above. Motorcycling is roughly 30 times more dangerous than driving a car because of all of the above. This is based upon the latest data from the National Highway Traffic and Safety Administration. Question 51. Why is hearing loss a concern when riding a motorcycle? A. Wind noise. B. Motor noise. C. Loud pipes. D. Vehicles honking. The correct answer is A. Wind noise. Riders should consider wearing appropriate earplugs to lessen the effects of wind noise. Question 52. When is riding in the rain the most hazardous? A. After several days of rain. B. After a couple of hours of rain. C. When it first starts to rain. D. Never. The correct answer is C. When it first starts to rain. When it first starts to rain, oil and dirt rise to the top, creating very slippery conditions. Question 53. In seconds, what is a following distance that generally provides enough time to stop or swerve in an urgent situation? A. 2 seconds. B. 4 seconds. C. 12 seconds. D. 20 seconds. The correct answer is B. 4 seconds. At speeds below 70 miles per hour, it generally takes about 4 to 5 seconds to come to a stop. Over 70 miles per hour, it takes longer to stop. This assumes riders with good braking skills. Question 54. The best way to become a more skilled motorcyclist is to A. Take long trips. B. Attend more training classes. C. Watch your friends. D. Watch YouTube videos. The correct answer is... B. Attend more training classes. The basic training course is only the beginning. In order to gain skills, riders should take every opportunity to take more advanced training courses. Question 55. What does ABS stand for? A. Anti-braking system. B. Antique braking system. C. Anti-lock braking system. D. After braking system. The correct answer is... C. Anti-lock braking system. Riders should refer to their motorcycle owner's manual to verify what type of braking system is on their motorcycle. Question 56. When does alcohol begin to affect the rider's ability to ride a motorcycle? A. Immediately. B. After one drink. C. After two drinks. D. At .08 BAC. The correct answer is A. Immediately. Riding a motorcycle requires more skill than driving a car. All four limbs are used, as well as the mind. Reaction time slows and judgment is affected immediately. Question 57. Tire pressure affects tire A. Traction B. Longevity C. Tread depth D. Both A and B The correct answer is D. Both A and B both traction and longevity are affected by tire pressure. Less tire pressure does slightly increase traction but can negatively affect tire life. It does not affect tread depth. Question 58. Cargo on a motorcycle should be A. Fastened and secured on the tank. B. Fastened and secured on the left or right side of the motorcycle. C. Fastened and secured above the tour pack. D. Fastened and secured as low as possible on the motorcycle. The correct answer is D. Fastened and secured as low as possible on the motorcycle. Make sure all cargo is fastened and secured as low as possible on the motorcycle. This is because you do not want to raise the center of the gravity on the motorcycle, which could affect balance. Question 59. If you are riding during the daytime, how should your headlight be set? A. Off. B. On low beam. C. On high beam if it doesn't interfere with other drivers. D. Flashing. The correct answer is C. On high beam if it doesn't interfere with other drivers. 
High beam provides maximum visibility to others. Since about 1979, most motorcycles have headlamps that remain on low when the motorcycle is running, unless switched to high beam by the operator. Question 60. How should the passenger sit on the motorcycle? A. Holding on to the back of seat or sissy bar. B. Close to the rider and holding his or her side, not too tight. C. On the fender. D. On the tank. The correct answer is... B. Close to the rider and holding his or her side, not too tight. If there are handholds built onto the motorcycle, the passenger should hold on to those. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you still need more practice, then check out these videos or click the first link in the description to get your cheat sheet, which will help you pass your DMV motorcycle exam on your first try.